rising suns Lighting up the dark Oh, we rise as one All right. It's Donna with your Phoenix is Rising And I have been just on Facebook Kind of trolling around and looking at stuff and I decided to kind of just do a quick little check-in on you guys in the group and see what you guys are posting as far as you know anything to do with your Phoenix is rising you know rising up out of the from the ashes and into the better yet to be and so I'm just sitting here and I'm reading all this stuff and people are sending me videos of controversial stuff around this coronavirus pandemic and here I am thinking that, you know, I'm a part of this whole thing. And just as you guys were isolated, stuck in your houses for a month, we were isolated, stuck in the hospitals because we worked every single day. Well, those of us who could, and, you know, if we could take a break if we needed to, but it was more, more days in a row, and then you suddenly get a chance to get a break. After 14 days, we get a break. So it's very intense work. And... So all we do is work and sleep and work and sleep and work and sleep. That's it. <laughs> you know, we don't really, you know, hang out and do stuff and go clubbing in New York or anything like that. So I just was not aware of this whole thing that people are actually feeling like this is a conspiracy, that this thing is not real. So here's the thing. The reason I'm doing this video as I'm getting ready to go to bed because it's really nagging me and I can't fall asleep. Hey, what's up? How y'all doing, Chelsea and Kimberly? It's really nagging me. And here's why. If you were to see what we looked at walking in as nurses and doctors and NPs and PAs, we walk into these hospitals here in New York. And if you were to see what we walked into and how these patients were so ill that you would not doubt that there's something going on here. There's something going on. Now, I can't say I know exactly what's going on. All I know, it comes down to two things. People are sick and I'm a healthcare worker. So I help to fix those people who are sick or do the best I can with what I got until they feel better or until they decide to leave this planet. Really, end of story, that's it. So if they're getting sick because of something that the government did, then I'm hoping that investigators will go out and find this thing. In the meantime, people are sick and we're doing the best we can. And if it is indeed a virus that has been created by Mother Nature and it just showed up, and started taking us all out. Then again, people are sick. I'm going to do my best to take care of those people. I don't care how it happened. I don't even want to care why these people. If there is a, a conspiracy and people are doing this. And there are some shady dealings going on here with the government. You know, I don't care if that's the case. The simple fact is people are sick. And we're going to do the best we can to help, to help take care of them and try to avoid more people getting sick. That's all this comes down to. So I'm hoping that if this is something that is produced by man and this is greed and corruption and whatever, then investigations will come because I'm not an investigator. I can tell you that right now. I'm a nurse. I'm hoping that all the people who are into that kind of thing can really dive into it and do their part and find out and come to life and whatever in the meantime i'm gonna do what i do people are sick i'm gonna take care of them and avoid any other about it else getting sick okay and in the meantime try my best not to get sick myself so whatever it is that's going on in the world and whether it's real or not real trust me when i tell you there's no negating these people are sick so whatever it is that this thing is, I've never seen anything like it before my whole life. And I've been in, I mean, I haven't been a nurse super, super long. I've only been a nurse maybe six years, seven coming up. Okay. But I've never encountered anything like this. 
all of us nurses are scratching our heads going, what in the hell is this thing? How is this thing knocking us down like this? These people are so sick. This is not like a, oh, a flu. People are like, oh, it's just like a cold. You know, it's just a really bad cold. Maybe a simple strain of this thing, perhaps. But the thing that we have been battling, nah, bruh. That ain't no cold. That ain't no flu. And it just gets you so quickly. Mm. And just as quickly as it came is as quickly as it seems to be quiet. Getting quieter right now. Which kind of scares me a little bit. Because I know that Eye of the Storm is a thing. I come from Florida. Okay, the Eye of the Storm is a thing. So, for all of y'all out there who are hating on the healthcare workers and that we're part of the whole conspiracy, whatever, I can guarantee to you that is not why I'm here. I came because a call was put out for people who were willing to come and to drench themselves in God knows what to take care of really sick people. Okay, and when I watch videos out there by other people saying that I have been or my friend went to the hospital and this is what's happening. I'm not going to say that there's ideal situations in the hospital. It is nothing like anybody has seen. Okay. So not these hospitals were not prepared. So when people coming in like, it's not this, it's not this, it's not this. Hell yeah, it's not that. You know why? Nobody knew this shit was coming. And I know I'm kind of speaking kind of rough here, but yo, these hospitals, these, these people here are hero. The real heroes here are the doctors and nurses and EVS workers. Holy mackerel. The stuff they've had to pick up and clean. Okay. These people don't get paid hardly nothing. And they come Every single day, they pick their asses up, put on those scrubs, knowing they're going to walk into hell. This is before we showed up to come help, okay? They're going to walk into hell, and when they do, they're going to see their neighbors, their friends, possibly themselves, dropping like flies. I'm talking about dropping. These humans are sick, and they do it every single day. The real heroes are the doctors and nurses that live and work and breathe in New York. These New Yorkers are tough freaking people. You hear me? And when we came and saw what they were dealing with, my God, to get up every day and walk into the hospital and hold your head up like that and smile and possibly drink some water and then to have somebody online be like, oh, we ain't going to wear no mask, you know? Because we don't feel like it. And we're like, okay. And then when you get sick, where you finna go? Right here to come make my life a living hell. Listen, people. Real or not, people are sick. Do the best you can to not get sick. It's devastating to lose your family members. Why would you put your family through this? Stay as safe as you can. I'm not saying we should be locking down forever and that business shouldn't be open. That's a whole nother thing. I'm not a politician. I don't know how that works. Okay. I just know I want as many people as possible, not in that ER. And let me just tell you right now, since that stay at home ordinance has been in place, our freaking ER is not overrun with sick, sick people. It is actually quiet now because people stayed their asses at home. So I know it sounds like I'm lecturing you guys, but something is trying to take us out. I don't care who created it. I don't care what, who is making money from whatever. I do not care. I just know that when somebody is at the end of their life and the only person there is us and we're trying to hold on for their life and we are seeing them slip away from us, it is devastating. And the real do doctors and nurses of New York and New Jersey and all these other hospitals that didn't have a damn thing before we showed up. They tried the best they could. And when people come here and talk a lot of crap about these people, it is not that these people had their places like this the whole time. This happened. It leveled their hospitals. It took all their freaking supplies. And we, they lost nurses and doctors and neighbors and moms and dads. And it was devastating. And it really upsets me to hear videos out there of people talking negatively about these hospitals. 
And so when they ask you for help and they ask for money and they ask and they ask and they ask, just fucking send it. Because these people needed help. And how dare you, how dare you jump on them now? And how dare you jump on the other people who are coming? I don't care how much they're getting paid. The fact is, there are a lot of people out there when I said I was going to come to New York that said, hell no, no amount of money would let me come up into there knowing that if I even breathe on somebody, I'm going to catch this thing and be dead tomorrow. No amount of money. And I said, baby, let's go. Our kids are grown. Our mom is taken care of. Everybody's okay. Let's go. I have a license. Let's just do it. It is not easy to pack up, leaving your family behind, kiss them, hope for the best, and pray to God that you come back. That's why we got paid whatever we got paid. So, my Phoenix is definitely learning how to be strong and how to recognize the badass nurse that I am because I did not think I could do 21 days in a row. I don't even know how some of these nurses are still going. They are kick-ass people. The nurses that were here before, the doctors and PAs that were here before, and the nurses and doctors that showed their asses up, left their family behind, don't even know if they can kiss their kids again because they might now have some weird freaking disease that could possibly take out their entire family. Those of us who are here lost loved ones. My mother died. I didn't get to hold her hand as she left this planet. Somebody I'm really connected to. I didn't get to do that. I gave that up. So I don't care what you think about us. The fact is, people are sick, and we are here to help as much as we can. With the equipment we got, with the PPE we can scrounge up, whatever. That's what we're here to do. And that's what we're doing. You know why? Because we're all rising up. And this gives us, as a human race, an opportunity. I don't care who put that opportunity in place. It gives us an opportunity to stop and to pay attention. The earth was hurting. Children were telling us about this. Children had to step up to the podium and said, you are killing our planet. Kids, the Bible says a little child should lead them. And we did not listen. And now, if you're telling me environmentalists are completely out of their mind, please, they are not. You know why? What happened when we turned it off? They were right. We got to come up with a better way, y'all. The ashes have burnt us. The ashes of our past will keep burning us if we don't stop. Don't touch that coal. Racism is a coal that will burn the crap out of you. Don't touch it. Look at it. Learn that it's hot. And don't fucking touch it no more. Learn from the things that have burnt you in the past, people. We need to wake up and we need to rise into a better future. Our kids depend on it. Our families depend on it. Our very planet depends on it. I know I'm doing it. I'm calling y'all to do that too. Rise. Rise from the ashes. Learn from the mistakes of your past. The past of your fathers and fathers and fathers and fathers. And step into a better way of living. When we emerge from this thing, we get a new way of living. Namaste. I love y'all. I'm so glad y'all are on this journey with me. And all of y'all are saying all kinds of stuff. Z. Z says you're the strongest woman I know. A true inspiration to us kids, mama. I love you, girl. She's so sweet. Such a sweet kid. And Stacy Tibbetstein. Oh, Stacy, my heart hurt for you not being with your mommy. But I know she knew you were using your God-given gift to save as many people as you could. Thank you guys so much for the love. And thank you all for believing me and believing in my wife. We are having the best time. This is such a wonderful experience. I'm not going to lie to you. The people here take wonderful care of us. They show up, these essential workers, man. We have this housekeeper that comes in here and gives us the howls. She'll make sure she doesn't come in during the day because she knows I sleep during the day. So she always comes. And if she's going to be off, this woman leaves extra towels for me because she knows I got to shower and scrub myself like crazy when I come out of that hospital. And I use like two, three towels, you know, but she does. She leaves extras. And that's so lovely, right? 
These people that show up every day and take care of us, the people who stitch the little masks, the people who feed us, World Kitchen feeding us every single day, the hospital feeding us, giving us water. It was bad, y'all. I'm not going to lie. That first wave of nurses that came and helped, holy mackerel, what we walked into was the apocalypse. It was bad. However, that's why I didn't do no videos. I was tired. Very tired. Okay? However, when all the hands came together, and this should have taught us something too. When all the hands came together, it made lighter work. You hear me? And that was the true miracle. It always happens that way. Humanity just has to come together and work together for a greater cause. I know we can do this thing. I love y'all. Good night for me. Or good morning for y'all. Or evening. Or what time is it? 11.30. Good day to you. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Bye.